video games, fighter jets. They all have one crucial thing in common. None of them work without computer chips. There are a range of semiconductors and there are a couple of key varieties that I think are important to know about. Um, one type is the kind of mature or legacy chips. Think kind of bigger and more reliable. And then the other type of chip to keep in mind is kind of next generation type chips. So those are um, kind of advanced Tip of, tip of the sphere in terms of innovation. They're the type of chips that are going to be critical for communications networks like 5G and for advanced connections that are going to power autonomous vehicles. Chips or semiconductors are tiny brains that power all things computerized and electronic. Chips are made on a silicon wafer. And that silicon wafer is taken and they build layers upon them along with different levels of wiring. Um, and that's ultimately how they become the integrated circuits that power our different devices. Semiconductors is, is really the fuel of our energy and the energy of our civilization. It really percolates into all aspects of our life. As a matter of fact, even the platform we're using as we speak now, starting from the cameras to the mics, to the computers, uh, to the cloud, uh, just in this small session, Semiconductors has uh, its fingerprints all over. Chips process data in our smartphones, display vivid quality on HDTVs, and even power fuel injection and driver assist programs in cars. We aren't going anywhere without them, and that means we have a problem. Fundamentally, there has been a major disruption on the global stage with a lot of issues related to uh, factory floors, change of rhythm. It's a global industry where to produce a chip, it has to undergo multi-hands and multi-factories. But fundamentally, this tour around the world got a lot of challenges with the past year. The pandemic triggered high demand for cars and electronics. And the demand is only going to grow as the products we use every day become increasingly digital and connected. But we need more creators to make the chips that these products rely on. This industry is on a growth path. When I started my career, we were like a $10 billion industry. Now the projections before pandemic were and still are that we'll probably double in the next 10 to 15 years. That means we'll be $1 trillion industry. So what happened is that with pandemic, all this working from home, networking, the homeschooling, telehealth, that required use of mobile devices, more laptops, more uh, uh, conference calls. So that really actually put a, basically became a catalyst to really uh, grow the demand. Innovation is the name of the game when it comes to making chips. And in 1990, the U.S. made 37% of the world's chips. Today, we make just 12%. But that's about to change. Major chip manufacturers are investing billions to meet the demand for a wide range of customers. The government has proposed a $50 billion investment to make the U.S. a global leader in chip production. I think the government's investment will be very important going forward in driving visibility into the importance of semiconductors in our everyday lives and in the advancement of technology across the board. And with starting that awareness comes an important aspect of bringing together the most talented minds and individuals and technologies um, to begin to solve the challenges that are in front of us. I think this is an important signal for the U.S. government to send to the private sector that says, hey, we are committed to ensuring that we have both the incentives in place and a regulatory framework that supports this sort of manufacturing here in the United States. So you may be wondering, what does this mean for me? The answer is jobs, thousands of them. Over the next 10 years, up to 400,000 jobs directly and indirectly related to chip production need to be filled. High tech, cutting edge, well-paying jobs and those that answer the call will help lead our country into the digital future. 
it will create a lot of jobs. Today, uh, in this industry in U.S., we have roughly 240,000 high-skilled workers in the semiconductor industry. And uh, the number of new fabs which have been announced, you can imagine that typically each fab will have one to 2,000 employees, but then there's a factor of five, which is the supporting employees uh, to support the infrastructure and ecosystem around the fab. There will be tens of thousands of new jobs created by, by these announcements. There's going to be a significant infusion of funds into this space in the very near term. That's going to catalyze job opportunities, both in the fabrication of chips, but also in the entire ecosystem that supports the fabrication. So if you're interested in manufacturing the cutting edge, um, if you're interested in really kind of the, the on the ground work that's going to be powering the future of devices and innovation and manufacturing chips is it. America's about to upgrade. Will you help us power up? Discover how you can make your future in manufacturing at creatorswanted.org. <laughs>